Now, the next group we want to look at just briefly is the Essenes. The Essenes, or I think I was just down to a uh, exhibit in New York City on the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they call them the Yachad, the kind of the 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 one, the group kind of thing, the community. Maybe the community would be the way to say it. The Essenes, okay, was a group that basically uh, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, when the Hellenists came in, they held on to their traditions. The Sadducees said, "We will assimilate with you, the Greeks." The Essenes said, the Pharisees even, even the Pharisees are too, quote, liberal for them. The Pharisees accepted the Hasmonean rulers in the high priesthood, and the Essene community said, no, no, the, the priesthood has to be run by this, the, the, the Zadok priest, the Zadokian priest that goes all the way back to the time of David. And so the, the, the Essene community basically pulled out of Jerusalem and said the whole worship in Jerusalem, both the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we cannot accept either one of those. And so they basically pulled off and went down by the Dead Sea into the desert and had a community down there. The community was at a place called Qumran, which is where the DSS were found, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in about 1948 by a little uh, Bedouin boy who was out playing in the caves along the Dead Sea, Scroll, the Dead sea area. He basically threw a rock into a cave and heard a clink instead of a clunk. He said, something's in there. He goes in there and basically pulls out what it turned out to be, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so basically you have caves down there. You know, you'll have, uh, and if you ever see the Dead Sea Scrolls, they'll describe it as 1Q, you know, 1Q, 2Q, 3Q, 4Q. 4Q would mean Cave 4 at Qumran. And so that's how they kind of do it. They tell you what cave it's in, Cave 6 or Cave 11, and then, you know, Cave cave 11, Q, which is Qumran, and then Habakkuk or Psalms or Isaiah or something like that. So... The Dead Sea Scrolls, and what they did down there was they actually, there was a shift they wanted. They did not want the Hasmonean. The Hasmonean priesthood went back to the Maccabees. They did not accept that. They wanted the Zadokite priesthood. And so this temple, the basically this temple was split, and their beliefs, they basically took Torah over temple. So they pulled out of the temple, went down there, and they copied the scriptures. They copied the Torah. And so then these scriptures were put in these uh, jars, these jars were put into ca- hid in caves, and in 1948, this uh, Bedouin boy finds the Dead Sea Scrolls, probably one of the largest find in, uh, in the 20th century was the Dead Sea Scrolls. It jumped our knowledge of Hebrew back about a thousand years. It jumped our knowledge of Hebrew. Our best manuscripts were around 800 to 1000 A.D., and then basically with the Dead Sea Scrolls, we had to jump back to 100 B.C. or so, about almost a thousand-year jump, and just showed how well the manuscripts had been preserved through that thousand years. So the temple, they were scribes. Uh, some people say they were monastic. The Essene community was monastic. Um, they've done some excavations in the graveyard. The graveyard will tell you who is really who really lived there. And it turns out there were some women down there. We don't know... I don't know a lot about the details of that, but I know there was a big argument over they were supposed to be monastic, but then they find these women in the graves and stuff, and so something must have been going on, okay? Uh, these scribes down there in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So we're grateful for these people. They had a lot of baptismal uh, places to wash and a lot of concern about cleanliness and that kind of thing, cleanness kind of things. So that's the Essenes, and they were so strict that they even, even the Pharisees, they rejected the Pharisees, these guys. But we're very grateful for them because they preserve so much of the scripture. Now, uh, another group would be the zealots. And we mentioned before that we probably, Paul was considered a zealot, a Pharisaic with uh, zealot tendencies, as uh, Dr. Dave Matthewson would say. And the zealots, basically, they wanted the kingdom of God to come as a political military thing. So when Rome came in and Rome was dominating in the time of Jesus, Rome was going to be the dominant power, they wanted to overthrow the Roman government. And so this is, they wanted to get Rome out of Israel so that Israel could rule, that the kingdom could come. And they wanted it done militarily and very physically. And, and so these guys were zealots. In some senses, they were like a first century terrorist group. That you know, they, you know, you stick a Roman, you kill a Roman, that's good, okay, and things. And they would, uh, they were, they would uh, tend to violence and things like that. So this is a political military thing with the zealots and things as, as far as their opposition to Rome that was dominating. Now the Samaritans. The Samaritans are an interesting group. Um, 
where did the Samaritans come from? By the way, the Samaritans in one interface with the New Testament. Two of the most famous passages are, everybody knows the parable of the Good Samaritan. The guy was beat up going down from Jerusalem. Oh, the, the Levite passes by on the other side. The other person passes by on the other side. Finally, there's a Good Samaritan, has compassion, takes care of the guy. The Good Samaritan. Again, that would be a real clash because the Jews hated the Samaritans and the Samaritans hated the Jews. And so the Samaritans, um, there's some real problems there. Where did the Samaritans come from? Well, first of all, they came from, um, in 721 or 2, the Assyrians came down and defeated Samaria in the north. And so basically the northern kingdom, you remember Israel under David, Solomon, and Saul, Saul, David, and Solomon, was united, Israel north and south. After Solomon and his idolatry and his wife's and stuff, the kingdom split north and south, Jeroboam, and Rehoboam, and the Boam brothers, and the kingdom split about 931. What happened is the northern kingdom then went after the golden calves, and for several hundred years then, the northern kingdom from about 931 down to 722, I guess that's a couple hundred years, the Assyrians came in at 721 and took out Samaria, and basically hauled off all the intelligentsia, all the rich people, all the people of status were taken away, and the land was left, the northern kingdom was hauled off and scattered all over the world. By the way, the diaspora, or the Jews scattered all over the world, is still the diaspora today. Those people, the Jewish people have been scattered ever since 721 till the present. Although, you know, many of them have gone back to Israel now, but to be honest, there's more what? There's more Jews in New York City than there are in the country of Israel. So it just, uh, the, the Jews were then scattered all over the world by the Assyrians, who were incredibly cruel, and the poor people were left in the land. Then the Assyrians, what they did was they took all the, the, the classy people out of the northern kingdom. They also then brought people from other areas and mixed them and had them intermarry with these poor Jews. So the poor Jews had to intermarry with these uh, Gentiles, and so the Samaritans were considered half-breeds. Because of this intermarriage, the Assyrians brought in other groups, and, and then basically there was intermarriage between these Gentile groups and the Jews in the northern kingdom. And so they were considered half-breeds, okay? And then what happened was the Samaritans uh, built a temple up on Mount Gerizim. Mount Gerizim was where the blessings and cursings in the time of Joshua, there's a town Shechem in the valley, and Mount Ebal on the north and Gerizim on the south, big, beautiful mountain, the, the Samaritans built a temple up on top of Mount Gerizim. Well, the Jewish temple is down in Jerusalem. And so now you've got this conflicting between the Samaritan temple on Mount Gerizim and the Jerusalem temple on Mount Zion, down in Jerusalem. And this, then you get this conflict between religion, not only between half-breeds and full-breeds, kind of between the Jewish, but then the, the, the conflict of temples and things going on. It turns out that John Hyrcanus, about 100 a little so, 110, a little bit in that era, B.C., 110 B.C. or thereabouts, that John Hyrcanus torches and burns down the, the Samaritan temple. So the Samaritans, they had their temple burned by the Jews, burned down, and so the Samaritans have real problems with the Jews and their domination coming up and destroying their temple and things. I know um, I've been up on Mount Gerizim. There's about 400 Samaritans today that live on top of Mount Gerizim. There's about 400 of these folks. Um, they don't accept the whole Old Testament. They only accept the Pentateuch. And as a result, by the way, if you ever go up there at Easter, uh, it's a very dangerous place to go this time uh, now because of the, uh, uh, the basic things that are going on in Israel. It's a very dangerous place. But uh, the, the, the Samaritans, um, they celebrate the Passover and they actually kill the lamb, the Passover lamb, and you can go up and see the place, uh, which is, I don't know, big as this room, uh, and they'll basically they've got these things that spread the lamb, and they basically cut the throat of the lamb, and they basically take the blood of the lamb and do the Passover service, just like the Passover uh, in Exodus chapter 12 and thereabouts. So the Samaritans do that. They, the problem has been, over, there's 400 of these guys, and they've intermarried, 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 intermarried. And what happens after you intermarry, 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 and you're marrying your cousin and your second cousin and all this stuff? And yeah, some of that stuff has been taking a great toll. When we went up there, the high priest of the Samaritans came out to greet us. And the high priest came out in all his royal robes and all his dignity, followed by his people. And he came out to greet us and things and greeted us and welcomed us up on Mount Gerizim. Uh, we then uh, proceeded, climbed up on the, 
we were up on the temple. I got up on the temple. There's a there's a platform where the temple was being and stuff until I think a little bit later they ran us out of there. But there's some beautiful pictures from the top of Mount Gerizim down in Shechem and Ebal and things. So the Samaritans are up on Mount Gerizim till this day. There's 400 of these Samaritans up there, and uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch is pretty famous uh, till this day. So Jesus will do the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus will also talk to the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. In the book of John, uh, chapter 4 or 5 in there, um, he will talk to the woman at the well. And this woman at the well will go back to Shechem and talk uh, to her people, the Samaritans. So Jesus went through Samaria and then uh, talked to them. So, But there will be this tension between the Jews and the Samaritans. The Jews view the Samaritans as half-breeds and as really despicable the lowest, uh, lowest of the low, despicable uh, people. The Samaritans hate the guts of the Jews because the Jews dominated them, destroyed their temple, other things like that. So, tale of two temples. John Hyrcanus, as we said, John Hyrcanus destroyed the Samaritan temple about 110 B.C. 